All right, welcome back to Close Up. No question about it, the race in the 1st Congressional District is shaping up to be quite a contest this year. Already, Republicans are lining up to challenge the embattled incumbent, Frank Ginta, in a primary. Among them, 2014 candidate Dan Innes. He joins us in the studio this morning. Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Yeah, so how are things going? Things are going great. Yeah. Having a good time, meeting people, getting the message out, and uh, reestablishing the campaign. Yeah, Look primary's, <laughs> primary's over now. Pri primary's <laughs> over. We've all caught our breath, and now we're refocusing on what's going to happen in September and, and in November. There's a lot of things to get to, but I want to ask you about something that's unfulting in your district that I'm mm -hmm. sure you're familiar with, and that's the arrest of Jerry DeLemus. He's facing federal charges. He does have a lot of supporters, as we just heard on the program yeah. uh, here in New Hampshire, that feel that this is a government overreach. Mm. Uh, what's your takeaway? I know it's early on. Well, it does look like government overreach. I mean, when you consider the fact that it, we went two years before the government decided to come after this guy, you kind of have to wonder what's going on, why did it take so long, what's the real agenda? agenda here that the government has and it, it doesn't really pass the smell test when you step back and take a look at it. You know, so I, I, I don't know where it ends up um, but you know when you look at government overreach in general I mean we see it in so many areas this is one that's really hitting us hard right now but it's it's true in so many ways so it'll be interesting to watch um, I know there's a lot of support for him and um, hopefully it'll end well yeah we'll see what happens all right let's talk about your campaign and first let's compare it to just a couple of years ago yep. going into this uh, you made it official last year yep Completely different mindset? Are you not as wide-eyed? I mean, you're more well, <laughs> certainly not as wide-eyed. You do come into it. I'm coming into it now with a deeper experience, a better understanding of, of how to campaign, and I think it'll make me a, a stronger candidate this time. Um, same position on all the issues, but but certainly someone who will um, run it a little bit differently. Well, let me get your take on the state of the party. Mm -hmm. I mean, Republicans. Uh, you know, some say the party's on the verge of a civil war. What's yeah, I, I don't know if it's on the verge of it or if we're kind of in it a little bit. It's, it's an interesting thing to watch, and I'm concerned that we have so many different factions working against one another, when the, the fact is, you know, we agree on most of the issues, the fiscal issues and so on, and it's, it's troubling to watch this play out. And there's talk of a brokered convention, that may happen. But I cannot imagine, you know, parachuting in somebody who's not running, for example, to be the presidential candidate for the party. I think you would disenfranchise so many Republican voters by doing that. Let's let the people have their voice. And if it comes down to a couple of candidates, Trump and Cruz, let's say, at the convention who have the lion's share of the delegates, then it's probably, it probably ought to be one of those two and not some other candidate. It, let's talk about Donald Trump. I mean, yeah. everybody's, and I've asked this to everyone who's been on the program lately, uh, what do you make of what he's been able to tap into yeah. and sidestep his yeah. behavior at the same time? A, a lot of us, you know, went to events that the candidates had when they, when they were uh, campaigning here. And I went to one for Donald Trump in Portsmouth. And I looked around the room, big room, huge crowd, as he would say, um, big room, a lot of people there. And you look around the room, and these are people who are doing what they're supposed to do in life. They get up every day, they go to work, they educate their kids, they try to do the right things. They're honest and hardworking people, and they feel nobody cares about them, and they're being left behind. And you saw that all across that room. And that's what he's tapped into, the great core of America's workforce that feels they're being ignored and left behind. They're watching jobs go overseas. They're watching jobs go to Mexico. No one in Washington talks about them and the issues that they're facing. All we say is the middle class is disappearing. Wow, that's too bad. But Donald is really hitting that. He's touching the middle class. He's not only talking about the fact it's disappearing, he's talking about how he'll bring it back. No, there aren't many details there, but he's hit an emotion, an emotion that, that Americans have right now, and it's propelling him forward. I understand it, and I understood it being there and listening to him with that crowd. Let me ask you about the race that you're in now. Obviously, Frank Kinta is, is, the, is the incumbent. Mm. Do you wish you were a little more aggressive in 2014, given what's evolved with the FEC? Um. No, I don't. I don't have any regrets with the way I ran the race. I, I ran it as a solutions-oriented candidate, which is who I am, and I'll do that again. I believe in, in a positive message and sort of putting that out there. Sure. And the FEC business, you know, nobody knew where it was headed or what was happening. So it, I didn't feel it was appropriate to bring it into the race at that point. Do you believe he's disqualified himself, as some believe, like Kelly Ayotte and leadership in Concord have asked for his resignation? The, the, there are a couple of issues here with, with Frank. I mean, one clearly is that 
you know, he, he violated campaign finance law. That's one thing. But the worst part to this is that he lied about it for five years. And he repeatedly said, I didn't violate the law. In fact, in the, in the debate, I think, with Carol Shea Porter, he essentially said he had been exonerated. Well, that was absolutely not true. And he knew that at the time. That, to me, disqualifies you to be a representative. If you're going to lie to your constituents repeatedly for five years, you're not suited for office. All right, so given everything that we just talked about, Frank Inta aside, the state of the party, why are you the guy? Because you're, you're going to be in a primary with Frank Inta, uh, uh, Pam Tucker's already declared, yep. uh, Rich Ashew seriously considering it. Most people believe he's going to jump in this thing. I think Why so. are you the one? I'm, I am the candidate that, that understands how all this stuff works. Right, given my background and experience as a small business owner, I understand the struggles that businesses face. I understand the struggles that the economy is facing. And going back to that middle class that, that Donald Trump is tapping into, I come from that. And I understand that, and I understand the struggles. As a business professor and former business dean, I know how the economy works, and I know how to bring it back. And I am a solutions-oriented person. I believe in small tax, or low, small government, low taxes, keeping government out of our lives, avoiding that overreach, mm -hmm. whether it's something as severe as, as what we're seeing now um, with Nevada, or if, if it's you know regulations that impact all of us and all of our businesses and drive up costs. Yeah, we're going to that's a common message though. We're going to hear what do you is. consider right now the biggest concern/threat facing the state? The the state or the nation? I mean the it, state it, the, the state our, it's a, a real lack of business growth. We're not bringing businesses into our state and there are several factors that impact that. You know, one is we're not really thinking wisely about education and proper investment there. But then we've got the, the whole issue around infrastructure and energy costs. Energy costs in this state are really high, and those have to come down. So we need a balanced approach to energy if we're going to attract companies that need energy to grow. We all, but we have a workforce problem. And going back to education, businesses will tell you, I can't find the people I need. And if there are people there, they don't have the skills that I need. So we as a state need to get strategic about vocational education, the community colleges, and the universities, and put money into programs that will get the businesses the workforce that they need. Low unemployment is great, uh, and we want that. But businesses need to be able to find that skilled workforce, and right now they can't get it here. We're, we're just about out of time, but uh, I, I need to ask you about a, a problem or a threat, as some have characterized it, that uh, isn't defined by district, certainly, and that's the heroin opioid crisis mm. in, in, in New Hampshire. Yeah. Uh, we see what's being done at the federal level. Gene Shaheen and Kelly Otter are working together on this as well. Have you ID'd any tax that you would take or something that you think that should be done? Well, I think it really comes down to the communities and the states. And if the federal government wants to provide some financial support to the states, that's terrific. But I don't really want them telling us how to use it because each community and each state has a problem in, uh, that they need to address in different ways. Is it through recovery centers? Is it through additional law enforcement? Is it working at the border? And there the federal government should be helping. Let's close that border down and stop the flow of this stuff. That's the big problem. Yeah, and, and we'll end on that uh, topic right there when it comes to the border and cross-border enforcement. Do you th believe that part of the component is going across and getting these uh, these cartels that are producing I, this I think it has to be. We've got to partner with the other countries that are involved in this and really tamp that down. If you cut off the supply, then I think we'll begin to solve the problem. But we've got to do that. And we've got to make sure we have good recovery for people who need help. And yeah. that that's critical. Yes. Because once you've used this, you know, you're in recovery then the rest of your life, and we've got to be sure we keep people from going back. Yeah, it's a big, uh, big thing to get the arms around, and there's no one easy solution. There, there isn't. All right, well, good to see you. There's going to be a lot of good issues to, to talk you. about Thank moving you. forward. Best of luck to you moving forward. And Appreciate we'll have you back it. Soon. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Right, good to see you. I'll be right back.